Hello, my friends. Welcome back to Tittle Tattle Tarot. It's Georgie. And on the table today, I have the Lightseers deck. And I want to ask a few questions about Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Now, this lady um, told a lot of stories about her life growing up. Um, she was actually um, abandoned by her father. Her mother had died. And by the age of 12, she was living in a convent. He dropped her off at um, a convent along with her sisters, two sisters, and he never went back for them. So she was very much um, an orphan at 12 and she grew up in the uh, convent. And uh, that's where she supposedly got her love of black and white, you know, from the uh, from the nuns um, and the, the things that they wore. So um, that was her inspiration for a lot of the black and white clothes that um, she designed. But all of that aside, I think she told a lot of stories through her life um, because she she was unhappy, obviously, with um, her childhood. Um, she made up a childhood that was um, more more accepting and more the way she wanted it to be. She very often said that she was brought up by aunties um, and she did uh, distort the truth throughout her life about various things. But the things that I really want to know about were her wartime activities. Um, it said that um, she was a Nazi spy. And that is going to be my first question. Did she spy for the Nazis, first of all? Was she a Nazi spy during the war? When war broke out and she was in Paris, was she a Nazi spy? Gabrielle Coco Chanel, was she a Nazi spy? I believe that she was. Uh, lovers, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be as in um, intimate love. It is um, a relationship, a union, working with someone, um, working with a group. Uh, this is very harmonious, harmonious working together. Um, I think that this woman's business, everything depended on forging a relationship with the Nazis. Um, she needed that because uh, Nazis were grabbing businesses left, right and centre. And if she wanted to protect Chanel and uh, she wanted to protect what money she had, she needed to um, she needed to work with the enemy, if you like, to uh, protect to protect her business that she worked so hard for. So uh, rightly or wrongly, that is what she did. Yes, she had a, she had a relationship with Nazis um, primarily to protect her business. But yes, she was a Nazi spy. So I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to put that one over over to one side. We'll come back to that. So um, my second uh, question was, it's been said that at the end of the war, she was never brought to trial for her spying with the Nazis. It was known, but she was never, never sort of held accountable for it. And Churchill was um, one of the people that, um, you know, could have made her be accountable, but he didn't. So I wanted to know, was she actually a double spy? Was she uh, working with the Nazis, but actually working for the British? Is that why Churchill didn't, you know, um, take any charges against her? Um, the Hermit in Reverse, no, I don't think it was that. Um, the Hermit the Right Way Up is... Um, very much uh, doing the right thing. Um, you, you follow the hermit and he'll lead you. He'll lead you along the right path and you'll get to your destination. He has the lamp and he's wise. And, and if you follow this hermit, you know, he, he'll get you right to the top to where you want to be. Um, he's slow and he's wise and you know that he won't lead you astray. Um, was she working with the British? So, you know, this would be, you know, um, Churchill, her you know, um, doing this sort of uh, work and, um, you know, um, working with the Nazis, but also working for the British um, in, in a good way, you know, leading in a good way. Uh, no, uh, she was not doing that. Uh, what she was doing, the hermit in reverse, is not to be trusted. Uh, the British would not have trusted her. Churchill didn't trust her at all. So, you know, it, it was not um, a relationship. That's not why he didn't 
um, you know, make sure she um, faced what she'd done. It wasn't because she was she was a double agent. So that's that's out. So what was it then? Um, was it because she had had a relationship with Edward, as in Edward and Mrs. Simpson? So Edward was a known Nazi sympathizer. So did Churchill not um, make her? accountable for what she'd done because of all the knowledge that she had about Edward, about Edward and his um, Nazi sympathies. So let's dig down under here. Let's get right to the heart of the matter under here. Yeah, I think so. Seven of Swords, that's your sneaky card. That's your I've got something on you card. So yes, I think that had Churchill turned around to her and said, right, you know, or, or turned around to the French government or whatever and said, you know, Coco Chanel needs to be, um, you know, tried for her Nazi sympathies, for her Nazi, for spying for the Nazis, then I think Chanel would have turned around and said, right, well, you know, and gone into the Seven of Swords. Um, Edward is a Nazi sympathizer. Um, he was, you know, a uh, deliberately working with Hitler at some stage during the war, you know, and um, she would have said all kinds of, of things against Edward that would have caused a hell of a mess. So um, Churchill, because because she had so much dirt and so much on Edward, um, he decided to just let sleeping dogs lie and not go after making her accountable for what she'd done because of everything that would have come out. So um, it's said that she was very anti-Semitic. Um, the, the partner that she had in Chanel, which had basically um, invested a lot of money and owned most of the shares, was a Jewish businessman. But um, she was very anti-Jewish, anti um, very um, anti-Semitic. And, um, you know, it's a purely a financial thing, but she resented this man tremendously and didn't didn't like um didn't didn't like Jews. Is that true? Is that true? Was she very anti-Semitic? Some some areas they say yes, definitely, and others they say, oh no, it was never actually said that she was. So let's have a look. Two of Pentacles. That's um that's your card. You 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 pay your money and you take your choice. Um she needed, she needed that money, she needed that investment. Um and she took it. She didn't particularly want where it came from, but she took it. You know, she had to have money injected into that company. And it came from this wealthy Jewish gentleman. And, you know, it's like, well, she took it. So I'm going to take another one for that because it doesn't actually, that doesn't actually answer as clearly as I wanted to. But um, yes, it was very much, you take it or leave it you know um that is your your decision you take it or you leave it your your business will either flounder or you know it, it will succeed but the money is going to come from this jewish businessman and there you are the devil that's what she thought of it it, it got her out of a bind it, it got her out of the two of pentacles that i don't know what to do my business needs money um but it, it can only come from this person but she saw she saw this jewish businessman and she saw the jews as the devil so I think that that's pretty much true. She she took their money. She she took the money, but she didn't want to um, because she saw Jews as, there you go. So let's just go back and um, go back through these questions that I had. The first one was, was she a Nazi spy? And I got the lover's card, not as in loving romantic, but although she did have a relationship with a Nazi officer, um, this is Simpatico working with the Nazis when they came into Paris. She, again, she needed what she needed. So she did what she did. So there you are. Yes, she was. Uh, was she double spying? Was she like um, doing work for, you know, the British? Um, is that why Churchill didn't, um, you know, force the fact that she should face what she had done, that she should, you know, be charged for her spying? Uh, no. No. Um, it wasn't because of that. Um, she wasn't. She she wasn't um, doing uh, spying for the British. So Churchill didn't not sort of make her face the charges um, because of that. 
um, she had no intention of working for the British. This would have been up the right way, uh, doing the right thing, leading, you know, um, you know, um, spying for, for the British um, as like a sort of double, double thing. I don't know what you call these, <laughs> these intricate words. You know what I mean? Like a kind of um, double spy. Um, so she wasn't doing that. She was in reverse. She chose which side she worked for. And it wasn't the British. It was not the British. So um, was it then that Churchill didn't um, make her face charges for the spying because of Edward, who later was with um, Mrs. Simpson or, you know, um, was with Mrs. Simpson? He had an affair with Chanel. And, you know, Chanel would have known all about his Nazi sympathies, Um Edward Edward was um, very much sympathetic to the Germans. And um, this would have all come out because if she'd been made to face up for what she'd done uh, via Churchill, she would have made damn sure that she brought Edward down with her. So that's why Churchill didn't didn't force the issue and make her, you know, accountable for her spying. And then my last question was about um, her alleged anti-Semitism, her, her anti-Semitic uh, feelings, um, because a Jewish businessman had invested into Chanel, put an awful lot of money into it and became the majority shareholder. She had to have this money. It was very much a two of pentacles. What do I do? I need this money. This is the only person willing to do this cash injection, willing to, you know, um, put money into the business. So she had to do it. It was a choice between the devil and the deep blue sea. Um, she chose, in her eyes, the devil. Um, this was her opinion of this Jewish businessman and of uh, Jewish business people. Very anti-Semitic, saw them as the devil, saw them as uh, the problem that the Nazis believed that they were. So there you go. Uh, this is what the cards are telling me regarding uh, Gabrielle Coco Chanel. Um if you have any more information, I have never read the book about her. Um, I don't know anything more than this, than what I'm being told here. Um, I'd love to hear your comments. Um, you know, just because you're a wonderful designer, just because, you know, you have a creative um, body of work and, you know, people think you're amazing. It doesn't mean that um, you have good morals. It doesn't mean to say that you're a good person, does it? Um, equally, different times you know I can imagine that as a girl from an orphanage you do whatever you do to survive um I'm not into cancel culture she did what she did um she's going to be held responsible to her god um you know it's not for us to hold her accountable um you know but um it's it's very interesting it is very interesting and I wonder how many people actually know about her wartime activities um, mm, so I shall leave that one with you and you take care, love each other and have a good day. And I'll be back very soon with another one. Take care. Bye bye.